it's a Louis video. Hi, <laughs> welcome to my video. I'm very excited to do this video. I've never actually done a video just for my Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton collection, <laughs> my Louis collection. So look, we're gonna do it. If you've seen my other luxury collection videos, there's not much new here, not gonna lie. You've probably seen it. But if you haven't seen those videos, this, this is the newest updated version. It's not like my entire luxury collection. I'm just doing Louis today. The original luxury bag collection I filmed and my SLG collection, I think I bought this dress actually, were well over a year ago, a year and a half ago. So I feel like it's time to do another collection video, but just Louis for your average everyday person. I've got a substantial Louis collection. I got started, let's say 2005. So I've been collecting for 20 years. It's not huge. Look, I'm not like, you know, claiming to have the best collection. I think it's pretty well-rounded, but I do want to add a couple of things. We'll do the smaller items first, and then we'll graduate. We'll slowly get bigger and bigger. How does that sound? By the way, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are not new here, welcome back. If you enjoy these videos, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a big thumbs up and also keep watching to the very end. I really appreciate you being here. I'm Samantha, I'm 36. I live in the third oldest city in Australia, Launceston, which is in the state of Tasmania at the very bottom, the island at the very bottom. And I do vlogs mainly of my life. I used to be a fashion model for about 10 years. Now I have a really unexciting, boring office job. <laughs> but on weekends, I have a double life where I film for YouTube. So this is my passion. This is what I love doing. I love talking about all this stuff. I love trialing new products. I'm obsessed with perfume, luxury products, makeup, hair and beauty products, all of that stuff. In my videos, I take you around Launceston, mainly in the car. <laughs> we go to cafes, restaurants, we do Woolworths shopping hauls, grocery shopping, Kmart, just day-to-day -day life, my weekends, my cats, cleaning. Uh, I do like little home hack try testing, home hack tests. What else? What else? What else? Bit of fashion, lots of um, beauty hauls, unboxings, and I'm getting really hot. If you like the sound of any of that and you love an Aussie and an Aussie accent, I am here for you. <laughs> I'm single as well. I live by myself. What else is there to say? Please subscribe. <laughs> Holy shit, it's hot. Oh my gosh. It is October. It's spring. Spring in Australia. And it's Tassie, so it's at the very bottom. It's usually quite cold weather. It's like England or New Zealand. We get all seasons here. In summer, it gets very hot, but right now it's really hot. And I don't want to say like, oh, it's really hot, because I know there's a lot of hotter places right now in Australia, but it was raining yesterday, all day. And now it's 23 degrees and sunny, and this house gets really hot. So I've got the aircon on. Anyway, <laughs> right, let's start. I have been rabbiting on, okay. Look, if I don't know the name, just look on screen because I don't know what this is called. No idea what this is, but I know I don't sell it anymore, but this is an iteration of a business card holder. You can see that I have very much loved the shit out of this because it's broken. There's a huge hole in the middle where there should be uh, some resin sealing this together. Reason being is I used to use this as my, like, Oyster card in the UK, bus card, tram card, whatever. And I'd put my, even when I lived in, in Melbourne, back in 2008, nine and 10, I had my ID in here, my student ID and my tram card. So I just had to tap that on the thingamajig. And I'm not sure what else I used to put in here, probably like gum. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> I've even got a little perfume sample from Louis Vuitton, like how they come in those little sleeves. Uh, doesn't smell anymore. It is a business card wallet, but <clears throat> it does tend to sort of flap like that. But I used to use this going out when I was uh, of the age where I used to go out all the time. And I used to put it in um, a clutch or a small bag that I used to take going out clubbing and I'd put 
some money in here, some notes folded up, my ID, a card. I probably even fit a key, I reckon, in down in there. And this was perfect because it was so small and it just fit everything I needed. So this is actually well used. You can see the stitching coming undone just there. That's how much I used it. I don't really use it anymore, but if I needed something really small, I have something. I'm getting a sore knee already, I'm sitting here crossing my legs. Uh, something I always use, use it every day. These are my house keys. Uh, so this is my car key, this is the key clay. I've had this for years. This one's made in France. Just got the key, Duvalaki on the end. When I had a smaller car key, my, my last car, I used to fit my house key in here too. And I put everything in the one Duva. But at the moment, this is a very fat proximity key. So it just goes in with a hairband. I always have a hairband on my car keys. Um, this is my drawer key at work. And that just goes in my handbag. So I don't actually need to get this out for any reason. Um, unless I'm like physically needing to unlock the car boot or something. So that is actually a fantastic little pouch. Before that key, I used to also fit my driver's license in here, but now it's a little bit fat and sort of distorted. So I don't put that in there. You could have your keys on the end. So I know people do that as well. So like this is a, you know, keychain basically. Um, and you could put money and cards and stuff in there and keep the, the rest dangling, which maybe I should start doing. Mm. Anyway, so there's that. That actually probably should have gone first, but I forgot. Oh, I've just realized I've got one more thing upstairs that I've got to go get. This is one of my most used Louis Vuitton small items. This is the Woody glasses case. I think, I don't know if you can still buy this. Um, I use it for my sunglasses, which is what it's for. Sometimes I swap it out and use it for like spectacles, especially if I need both and I'm wearing one. But this is suede lining, the microfiber suede lining in that coquel, coquel, coquelicot, 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 I don't know, that's the red. <laughs> so it's similar to the, the Sarah wallet you can get in currently with this same design, which I'm going to buy very soon. But I love this and also because it's leather inside, this is stretched slightly because when I first got it, I wasn't sure my sunglasses were going to fit and they do now quite easily. It's got a magnetic button closure and I absolutely love, 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 love this case. One, because my red is my favorite color, obviously. And two, it's really compact, long lasting and it keeps my glasses really well protected. So I love this. Next, we have the very first item I bought from Louis Vuitton. This is the Zippy Wallet. This was purchased when they first came out and you can still buy the Zippy Wallet. Um, and now just showing you a close up of the hardware, but it's pretty good. The zip, this is like stitching. I used this heavily for years. Stitching's in excellent condition, as is the canvas, no cracking or anything. And this was the first ever purchase. I bought this in Queenstown in New Zealand in their tiny little Louis Vuitton boutique. I've even got the dust bag in here. So that's the condition inside. It's mint condition. I really, aside from a bit of tarnish on the zip, I could sell this quite happily with a decent price. Needs a bit of a wipe in the coin slot. Um, but aside from that, it's in bloody fantastic condition. As you can see, I don't use it anymore. This corner, there's a little bit of, th there's a thread coming out on both sides. You can sort of just see there. That's all. And this is from 2005. I've got another wallet. This is not sure what it's called, but it's the similar to the Sarah wallet. It's a Vanille and I'm actually still using it. This has got card slots at the front. I don't use these because it's really hard to get cards in and out because of the Vanille. It is well worn and well used. It's got 
stitching's come undone there and it's a bit dirty it needs a clean but I, I just like this size wallet I prefer it I have been using a little Gucci smaller size similar to this in like width for like smaller bags but I I don't know something about having everything visible and flat you don't have to fold receipts or money and I can also fit my um, phone in the front when I am when it's not very full I don't have much money in there I can fit my mobile phone here so I can kind of use this as a little clutch as well it's been so well used that the little slots that separate all, all the cards in the back the leather has just come apart so like now there's just three really long slots <laughs> uh, where all my cards and my license and everything go. But yeah, this is the um, state of this, the button as well. It's totally worn off, the gold. But I, I mean, aside from that, it's in pretty good condition and people always compliment me on this wallet. So there you go. <laughs> One of my other favourite items that I've used heavily, it's the small... Uh, cosmetics pouch I don't think it's called small anymore I think it's the PM I think uh, I use this in my handbag it does have things in it this is like a little emergency pouch which I've been doing for since I've ever had a handbag basically my mum taught me that when I was very young however the only thing that kind of shows how old it is is the um, whatever you call that thing and then inside there's a little bit of stitching lifting and then the tag here it's very um, worn and aged and it's starting to curl other side not though and that's the hardware and still zipped perfectly I love it. It's a beautiful size. It's really good as well if you want to put like uh, makeup if you're traveling. Uh, like you just need a small amount of makeup. It's great. Love this. I really should get the next size up. Next, I've got some agendas. <laughs> this is the small agenda. Don't think they make this actual style anymore with the like the koala clip. But it's got that and it's in the light pink color. I've got a little Kiki K pen. So this is a agenda that I removed the ring binding binding rings. I still have them. If you're interested to see what it looks like without, it's got these tiny little steel teeth that then you hook in the um, binder ring. But I took it out because I now use this for my passport perfect size and I don't use a diary this size I used to use a diary this size I used to love this but now it holds my passport wallet I mean it holds my passport so I've turned this agenda into a passport holder with this is why it's great it's got a little pen spot for the pen which you need when you're filling out landing cards and whatever else and then it's also got card slots and I've got it hot stamped but I could put you know money cards money there's another there's a pocket there I think this is genius <laughs> um, so if you've got like a small agenda you don't use anymore take out the binding rings and use it for your passport it's fantastic um, it's in very good condition actually I did use it a fair bit but it's still in good condition so that's just like the small size there you go right next i've got two agendas bigger agendas oh <sighs> i just had heart palpitation right i have in order of purchase the large ring agenda and the desk agenda now i got this first i don't think this existed did you exist i don't think so uh i got this first and I loved this. I loved it. Used it for years as an agenda. Then I decided that I bloody hate agenda rings, especially when the paper that you, the inserts that you buy are small, pages are small. I don't know, something about writing on a, 
uh, a raised page or a lower page with a great big metal row of rings gets in the way of my hand. I can't go to the end of the page. I can't use the full page of paper because it's... Anyway, <laughs> so I stopped using it because it was just annoying the shit out of me. And I started using like these moleskin diaries, especially the, the extra large size that's got like a week on one side and like notes on the other. And I loved those, used them for years. Anyway, then I was like, no, I want to go back to using my um, Louis Vuitton agenda because it's not getting used. It's just sitting there and I feel like it's time to bring it back. And I think I had, I bought another insert and I tried possibly just use note paper. I've forgotten now. Anyway, then I just cracked it one day and I, I looked online and someone else had done this and I thought, no, I'm going to do that because I'm never going to use this how it was designed to be used with those bloody rings. So I've still got them, but I removed the rings as well from this. So I think, I think, I'm pretty sure I did these at the same time. I think I did. So this was easier because it's just got those little teeth either end. This, however, didn't go to plan. So it's got two screws and you can see it's missing the bottom screw. That's because it broke off whilst I was unscrewing. So this, this top one here, I'll show you close up. So this one, I can unscrew that like a, it's got a thread and everything. I'll show you. So it's a little, tiny little screw like that. And it screws into there. So when you want to put the ring binder rings back, technically, you can't anymore because this is broken, you just slot them over the two holes and then you screw in these and you've got your ring binder back. So easy. So easy. And this also, once screwed in, protects you from getting like stabbed by this piece. So I got this far, like this was quite tight. I had to use a screwdriver. And I got to this and it just wasn't unscrewing. I couldn't, it wouldn't work. It was just spinning like this. It wasn't lifting up. It was really oh, so frustrated. So I snapped it off. Um, I, they either screwed it in way too hard and it went past the thread, but I don't know if you can see, but it's still got the screw in there. <laughs> this top, it just snapped off. And then obviously the, the binder came up out I'll show up to know. I've got it somewhere with all my stationery. Anyway, so then I'm like, oh, now I've got this like thing sticking up. How am I going to be able to use that? Well, I'll show you. This is my work agenda. Take this is what I leave at work. This is a moleskin day to a page A5 journal hardcover. This is the spine. Can you see those two divots? <laughs> So I don't know why I've turned this into a bloody tutorial about how to do this, but you just slide it into the back, tuck in the little straps, and then it sort of, it stops about there, and then it closes perfectly. And because I've got this hard, fat, binding spine, there's no problems. I don't, I don't, I don't even see those screws. It just lays open on my desk, on my, let's just go forward a little bit. Just lays like this, sits like that on the desk. You know, wouldn't matter where it was. It just is perfect for me. And I've got a little ring for my pen and I've got slots for whatever else. And you know, there you go. I have repurposed this and I love this because it's like my favorite di diary to write in and my favorite holder, <laughs> agenda holder cover. This is the desk agenda, no holder, right? It just is designed to lay flat on your desk and that's it. The reason I use this one as my like personal diary is because it's a lot more slimline. So I'll show you. This one's a lot fatter because this was here to protect the rings. Like it's been reinforced in here or something. 
very hard. Whereas this is just canvas and there's nothing in here to reinforce it. So I prefer this one because it slots into my handbag beautifully and it's easy to carry around. And I also find this clasp really gets annoying after a while. I actually bend it back when I put it on my desk so it doesn't like flap in the way. Eventually it will sit like this, this bit, but it just gets in the way. <laughs> I got this because I wanted to be able to fit in my own diary that I prefer, which is the Hobonichi Teco. This is the English version that they bought out. I think the first time I ever bought an English version out. It's a Japanese journal, I think it's like a bullet journal or whatever. I've actually done many a video about this journal and it fits, it's slightly wider than an, an A5, US A5. So the moleskin probably ends about there. In terms of the, the width of the page, it's a lot bigger. So it fits in this perfectly. Yes, it does leave a little bit of a gap here, but I don't really care. Uh, I love it. And also I use the, um, got lots of card slots down the back and another like, little slot here. So I just like slot the pen in there. That's perfect. I love this. I love it. And I had it hot stamped just with an S. And then I've got my little sticky notes and then whatever else. And like, this is the best. I love it. I love both my journals, agendas, whatever. But I love this one because of the, how slim line it is. And I mean, yeah, things can fall out, but they don't tend to. And I carry this to and fro every day, but I put it in my handbag and it fits nicely. It's just, mm, love it. I was going to put this with the luggage, but we're going in size. So this is not available anymore. It's a men's line. It's a toiletry, I forgot, doppio, whatever they call them, like, you know, like Cristiano Ronaldo style, but it was kind of before they started to do that. This is when I purchased this. So it was the first time they bought out the silver hardware and the black brown leather. I think this is technically brown, apparently. Even though it looks black to me. I really needs a wash, but there's a few things in here that I probably could get out if I tried. It's just got two internal pockets and they're like waterproof. You can just clean them with a damp cloth. And it's got this pocket here, which is great. I've got like cotton buds, snail file, bobby pins, hairbands, and like sewing kits. I always have like a little emergency sewing kit in my travel, anything travel related. So yeah, this is, I love this. It is a little bit faded on the like the canvas and areas, but I don't know why it's just, probably needs a clean. Anyway, it's a square shape. It is very annoying when you are trying to access things because of this design. So I wouldn't buy anything in this sort of design any, again. I really want to get a nice um, BB. But anyway, I still use it. Every time I travel, I use this. I love it. I use it for makeup. Now I use it for skincare. But anyway, it's very good. Love it. It's lasted me forever and it's nice and soft now. And that is the end of the SLG portion of today's video. <laughs> Next, we have handbags. There aren't many. We'll start with the smallest. This is the evening clutch that I don't know what it's called. I've had it for years, got it in the Brisbane store. It is very well used. I used to take it like out when I used to go out at night, dancing, clubbing. So it's very aged, used, it's had, my, it's had alcohol spilt on it, but it's in very good condition, clearly, because it's a canvas. Got a little, right. It comes with its own little strap, very cute thin strap which I have used for other items before that's the inside just canvas it is in excellent excellent condition but it's very versatile and also you know what I have not touched this hardware this brass like I haven't cleaned it or anything and look at the condition of it it's beautiful um, but you can undo this and then you can hook it on the other side if you wanted to just carry it like that, like that was like the trend 
around your wrist. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> but I still use this if I want to go out of an evening and I don't want to take a very big bag and my pochette matisse is too big even, I will take this cute little baby. Next, we have one of my absolute favorite handbags, my pochette matisse in the monogram canvas. Fun story, I'm probably, if you've seen my other videos when I've got this bag, you will know this story. But I went into Louis Vuitton, I was going to the movies, it was my birthday, I went into a Louis Vuitton to look at something for my sister, it just like they see if they had them in, had something in stock. Every time I went into a Louis Vuitton for years, I used to ask if they had any pochette matisse in stock in monogram canvas. They never did because it was oh, it was hard, really hard to buy. Sold out everywhere. It was waiting lists galore. And I went in one day. It was my birthday. We were about to go to the movies to watch something gold class for my birthday and I was like don't suppose I went it actually that's right I went in to look at this and I was going to buy one of these if they had them in stock and it, it, instead they had one of these <laughs> it came out with a with this and I was like you're kidding me you've got one and I was, she was like yes we do so I was like oh it's mine well I'm, I'm buying it because it's meant to be so I've had this beautiful bag for I would say three four years Maybe four years would have been 2021 or oh, 2022 I can't remember I've probably got the receipt somewhere I can look but this bag was two thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars you Australian when I purchased it and today I went on the website and I checked and it's up to four thousand five hundred ish <laughs> nearly five thousand dollars so this is bag value brand new is doubled <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can't, I, just, I still can't believe that I have this and how it came to be but anyway I've got a review on this bag talked about it loads I'm not going to crap on anymore but I love it I've actually kept it in pretty good condition have I got any maybe a tiny little water spot there tiny I try not to wear use this bag when, if I know it's going to rain just so I can preserve it a little bit more. That's what she looks like inside. I've got loads of like, it's a pharmacy back here. Um, I've like, check out the review. I've done a what's in my bag. If you want to know anything else about this, I've probably, I think I've compared this as well to the next bag video wise. I've got loads of videos. So the only thing that bugs me about this bag is the strap and the fact that it's made out of canvas. Oh, there's a hair stuck to the, there we go. This strap remains in its shape. <laughs> so there's no softening of this, which can be annoying. And I know the solution is to like use a different strap, <laughs> which I've considered doing. I have. I just haven't gotten around to getting one because it's not... I, I just put up with it, basically. But that is the most annoying part about this bag. One is it's not quite big enough to fit like a water bottle and two is this bloody strap so anyway I store all my bags with their dust bags and anything else um, but I don't put them in their dust bags because I like looking at them and I don't, my house is not that dusty <laughs> next we have um, a pre-loved purchase I bought this from fashion file this was a post-surgery gift to myself. I had a major surgery a couple of years ago and I was adamant that I was going to reward myself after spending a lot of money on a surgery with a very expensive handbag. Anyway, I've always wanted a red handbag. Always. I don't have the first handbag I ever got from Louis Vuitton, which is the Speedy 30. I sold that 2018, I reckon, and I got 950 for it. And I'm really regretting doing that I wish I'd kept it I purchased that bag from Sydney Castle Ray Street in 2007 I reckon the only handbag that they sold that was under a thousand dollars and my sister and I both got one it was before it came with the strap like it was just the handles couldn't buy a strap version shoulder strap oh, I love that bag my sister kept hers she still got hers uh, used it to death Anyway, I stopped using it because it used to annoy me because it didn't have a shoulder strap. So I sold it, but I really wish I hadn't. Anyway, anyway, so this is the 25 Empreinte 
in the, I think this is the cherry colour. Um, I actually had to stop using this for a while because it started getting really sticky on a few spots here. It's a little bit sticky on the resin. I think it might just need to clean. I was using it like all the time. It's great in winter because obviously it's leather and it's not going to like if you get rained with this, I always like have to like cover this up but this is great because you can use it in rain hail or shine <laughs> it's better than the original monogram 25 because the zips come down on the sides to give you a bit more space so i feel like you can fit more in the only annoying thing is with this handbag is the shoulder strap is um the opposite to the pochette matisse one this is really long so if you want to leave it on dangling and just carry the handles it dangles like down here like it's very long it's good if you're tall and I've got it on the sh like the shortest button the shortest hole so sometimes I usually just carry it with everything in it on top of the shoulder strap I just leave it in there and it's also got two lovely big internal pockets and a giant zip pocket which runs the whole length of the bag and it's got this model has two outside pockets no just one one outside pocket um and it's got a key with a lock which i just keep on the bag and it's don't doesn't have feet which is sort of annoying i wish it did um but yeah i can fit a lot in this bag it's a bit of a mary poppins bag if you've ever seen or seen any videos or seen a real speedy or you have one you will know and understand and agree that they fit so much in them I bought this from I think this is 2017 collection this color and style of speedy um, I know that they've got like I really would love the black 30 speedies in the soft variety now but this is quite smooshy as well like this is not like it's structured but it's like it's soft do you know what I mean this was made in France yeah, so anyway, I use this, I tend to use this in winter more if I need a bag this size, purely because um, I won't get any, it won't get rained on. <laughs> but it also is quite annoying at times if I'm wanting to wear, say, all red or a colour that sort of, like a lot of my wardrobe goes with red because I tend to like just wear a few colours. But if I want to wear like a, I've got a giant red coat or if I want to wear something like this and I feel like I've just gone a bit OTT on the red. Um, so I really want a similar size bag but in black. That's my next handbag on the list. I have a bigger one, uh, um, YSL Lulu in the large size but that's too big. I want one that's sort of this or slightly bigger. Anyway, so there's my Speedy 25. Oh, you know what? I think it's in here. This lives in here because I don't use it. And I ran out of... I didn't have anywhere to store it on the shelf. It's been so well used that it's been retired. <laughs> Is this... I've forgotten the name of this bag. I always forget the name of this bag. Look at the, look at the handles. <laughs> ah. Oh my god, I use this bag every day, every day for I reckon five years, maybe longer. So there you go. That is a what a handbag looks like that's been worn. And look at all the like I've this has been refurbished by me. This used to be darker. But like look at the hardware. I haven't touched the hardware. Look how shiny and undamaged it is. The only place it's damaged is on like the the buckle doodah where it's like lost its it's literally not gold anymore, brass. Why I love this bag is you could adjust these handles, which are disgusting now. They're actually gross. But the other reason is I loved the uh, opening. Look at the access of this handbag. Like Oh, and it could fit so much in it. This was my daily handbag for years and I, I didn't, I just treated it like, I treated it really well, but it, I got its money's worth, let me tell you. 
um, there's a few bits there that are worn. Yeah, so look, it's I don't touch it anymore, obviously, but I think I need to I'm gonna put it outside in the sun for a bit and air it because that's a bit ugh, big face. Okay, so the next item is my all in in the MM size. And a bonus item is my silk leopard print scarf that I use and have always used. It used to be on my the bag I just showed you. I used to have it on that bag, but now it's on this bag. I just like it because it's a bit of a you know, something extra. So this is technically luggage, this handbag. I don't think you can buy this anymore, sadly, because I love this bag. I'm like sad for you if you want one. I bought this instead of getting a Neverfull. I've talked about, I've got two videos. I think I've got three videos that include this bag. What's in my bag. I've done a review. I've compared it to a Neverfull. <sighs> Watch those. <laughs> I got this mainly because it has a zip, which the Neverfull doesn't have a zip. And it's got wider straps that are more comfortable and it's got an internal pocket. I think they never full had an internal pocket. But I also got it because it came with this luggage tag because it's luggage. This is technically luggage. And the reason that it's luggage is, I'll just take, I've got a fan in my bag. I always have a hand fan in every handbag. <laughs> um, is it turns into a flat piece of canvas that you can then lay in your suitcase or you can fold it up again wrap it round and you can put that in your suitcase like you know you could roll it if you wanted to but this was the medium size there were was one slightly bigger which to me would have been slightly ridiculous maybe like beach bag size but this is the same size as the GM Neverfull my arms are getting sore <laughs> and this fits my 16 inch laptop comfortably I can use this as an overnight bag I've used it as a gym bag I've used this for the plane traveling carry-on work bag I use this as well as my work bag generally when it's warmer because I don't want all of this to get rained on I love this bag this was probably more expensive than a Neverfull but to me it was worth it for the features that I just listed <laughs> and I love it. The only thing that is a bit annoying is because it's designed to fold flat, the edges are straight and, and kind of quite hard. So like if it's not very full, it kind of can be a bit flappy, but I don't, gen my, it's generally full um, when I use it. And like, you know, how good is the zip? Like you can zip it up. If you're someone that needs a zip, you might be able to buy these secondhand now. But I would say you could probably buy these on like Fashion File or Bestia Collective. But anyway, all in. And I was debating getting the on the go, I think it's called. But this won me over because of the zip, essentially. Even though I want an on the go as well. One of my first ever, this is a 50. So this is my Keyball 50. I bought this because it was slightly smaller than the 55 to fit in overhead plane compartments. This bag has been used to death. I've got a whole video on the quality of this bag and the patina and the whatever. This was made in France. It's been battered and bruised. I have tried to restore it somewhat. There's a couple of big scuffs you can see, but it's been used. You know, that's what they're designed for, it's luggage. It's very hard wearing, it's been rained on. I bloody love it. Um, the zip's perfect still. <laughs> I actually keep these cardboard things in here to keep it shape. There's not a lot of inside to show you except um, a bit of a fraying going on here. Bloody love it. It's heavy when it's full. <laughs> I've got the normal sized strap which is also in pretty good condition. Um, the only thing that's tarnished a lot is the lock, which I think is quite common with speedies and key balls. It's a different hardware. Anyway, this is annoying because it doesn't, This will, it'll tend to do that a lot. Like 
for some reason it's staying now, but it doesn't always stay. Highly worth the money. If you're looking at getting a travel overnight, carry on, can do everything. Like if you got the 45, perfect for the gym. Perfect for the gym. Like I've actually been wanting a 45 for some time. Exactly for that reason, but I don't go to the gym anymore. So I probably don't need one now. When I used to go to the gym, I used to want to get a 45, but um, I used my Oli in, so it didn't really matter. Anyway, that is the last bag of my collection. I do have two more items to show you that aren't handbags or luggage. <laughs> uh, but there you go. This is a very sad occasion. Um, and I loved this scarf. This is a Louis Vuitton cashmere. I used this so much that I'm pretty sure the tag came off. But the story is that I think I, so I wore this somewhere and someone spilled coffee on me, like milky coffee. And I thought I was clever and I was saving money and I washed it, hand washed it. Or did I put it in the machine? I think I put it in the machine on delicate. Do not do that. Do not do that. Take it to a dry cleaner which I should have done and I didn't do it. And now it's ruined. Like this used to be a pashmina, silky, slightly shiny, flat, not, not, um, not textured like it is now. It's kind of hard to illustrate. You can kind of see. So this is, this was basically ruined in the machine and uh, I used to wear this like every bloody day in winter. This is a great scarf. It's still, it's still a good scarf, but you can't actually tell that it's Louis Vuitton unless you really get up close. So just a big square. And I used to wear it um, how everyone used to wear their scarves with the little V. I used to do this. Oh, and like, you know, You'd have your coat on and I'm pretty sure it's shrunk as well it used to be a bit longer um, but yeah I used to wear this with a coat and it was a bit like wasn't as chunky as this and very warm kept me toasty um, I haven't worn it since because it just makes me sad every time I look at it <laughs> I'm including this just for fun it's not really um, I don't know where I got this from, probably a bookshop. This is a Louis Vuitton coffee table book, but it's in absolutely disgraceful condition, so we won't go too close. Been on my coffee table for years, starting to lift a little bit here because it's got this dust jacket, double dust jacket, that I think turns into a poster from memory. So, oh, there's a little stain there. But without the dust jacket, it's got a beautiful white, um, embossed logo and then a really nice um, spine but the dust jacket turns into does everyone remember this do you remember this anyone who's been a designer that's in this book a list of everyone's names so I just really liked it to go on my coffee table because obviously I love Louis Vuitton. Art, fashion and architecture. So it's just, for example, a Louis Vuitton designed stool. <laughs> just like the dust jacket. So I, I don't know, it's a really fun book to look through. You know, as it in a liar, um, designed this handbag. How cool is that? And also um, the architecture of all the Louis Vuitton stores around the world which is really cool because they're really clever. That is the final Louis Vuitton thing in my collection. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and comment down below on your, my, your favorite um, piece in my collection or if you've got anything I have or if I've gotten any dates wrong, anything, please let me know in the comments. Say hi. Subscribe to my channel. There are some videos on screen for you to check out if you would like to stick around and watch some of my other 
luxury fashion videos and also don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok and otherwise I will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching Mwah! bye guys